Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, we continue this whole series, 40 Days with Jesus, as we focus on some of the things he did, some of the people uh, that, that he connected with. Um, today we're going to look at him uh, uh, as he cleanses the temple. Uh, and it's the widow in the temple. We're going to see a little short film. Uh, uh, the widow in the temple, she is uh, a fictional, um, though, very, though I'm sure there are folks like her. Uh, and, but what Jesus did is not fictional. I was there the day that Jesus walked into the temple. He just stood there at first, almost as in disbelief. And then I saw it. I saw that fire growing in his eyes. I'd come from Galilee to the place where God said he'd meet us. Did it feel like a scam? Yeah. I was never able to afford a lamb for my sacrifice, so I had to settle for one of those overpriced pigeons. As a young wife and mother, there's a word you never expect to be called. Widow. I didn't realize how safe I'd felt with my husband around until he was gone. And then it just felt like being exposed on every side with nothing in between your babies and a world of vipers. But me, just me. So I stood there that day in the temple and I watched as Jesus grabbed a whip and drove those businessmen out of the temple, poured their money on the ground. But more than that, there was something about the expression on his face. I recognized it. He swung that whip like vipers were threatening his kids. He said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. <laughs> it took me three years to figure out what he meant. <laughs> Slow learner. <laughs> He wasn't talking about the building. That was a place where dishonest men put their grimy fingerprints all over God's glory. They defiled the intimate process of worshiping Him. That day wasn't about destruction. It was about hope. Because now, knowing God is all about Jesus. As I think about that day back in the temple and I remember what Jesus did and how he did it it felt like being rescued life can still be brutal the kids appetites are still growing I still cry a lot but he made a place for me to be still, where rest and trust meet right there at God's feet. And the price of that access, it's paid because of Jesus. He conquered death, and that's how I make it through life. My brother was four years older than I was, um, and when he was as young as he could be, he took the test to, to be a lifeguard. And uh, it was in the public pool, and remember he came home uh, before he was gonna have to take this, it was in the pool, and he had to rescue this guy who taught the class, and the guy had been in the Marines. And he said, Dad, he, he told us that he's not going easy on us. Uh, and he described to me how he had taught him and all of them, that if, he was gonna, if, if they were going to rescue somebody, they had to actually be violent 
when they, when they came to this person, that this person would drown them otherwise. And they, they were taught how they were supposed to ram the hands down and throw them around and get them in a grip. And he said, I don't know if I can do it. And, and I remember the next day he came home and he was so tired, he says, Brad, I did it. Three people passed out of like 20, right? And he said, I did just what he told me. You know, he was so strong and he was fighting me, but I ripped his hands down and I turned them around. He says, I didn't know I, was that, I could be that strong and that fast. It's kind of what it takes. Uh, I've had two sons who were lifeguards since then, and, and uh, in their training, they taught them the same thing. When you come to that moment, you have to almost be violent because there's danger there for you. And if you're going to rescue this person, it has to be overpowering. I remember when I was um, really small, I, I, I would sleepwalk sometimes. And, and uh, when you sleepwalk, you're sleeping. But, but I remember this one time I, I woke up. I, had, I was outside, and I woke up just in time to feel my brother push me through the door. Uh, and, and back into our room. And, and um, I, was, I was little, but I wasn't small, right? And, and, uh, and I'll never forget how powerful his hands were. Because apparently I, I asked him, Why, why'd you do that so powerful? He says, well, you were fighting me, man. You, were fight- you had to get in there. And he went, boom. That's what it takes to rescue us sometimes. Huh? This... Uh, character that you saw, she, she knew that she needed to be rescued. Single mom, being taken advantage of, even um, by those in authority who should have watched out for her, you know. Where do you need to be rescued in your life? Or do you just stuff all that in? Say, I don't really need to be rescued anywhere. I think this is an awesome point that she saw in the cleansing of the temple in Jesus with those that whip in his hands, casting out the money changers. We, we, we always see in him this violent outburst. We're not sure what's going on. I think it, it is an amazing point that what he was doing was rescuing us. You can put that up now. What he was doing was rescuing us. Have you ever looked at it that way? Or have you thought, oh, meek and mild Jesus. Why, uh, this is really out of character for him. I, I didn't think he sinned. And you know, he's not being nice to people. You ever struggle with that? You see, to rescue us, he can't be meek and mild. He has to be powerful and strong and overpowering. He didn't sin here. He restored. He restored the place where we can find God. And when he goes the way of the cross and the empty tomb later, We need to see him as the conqueror. It is finished, it's done, it's taken care of. So that we might know in every place in our life where we need to be rescued. Where is that for you right now? Maybe some guilt that is heavy on you and you stuff it. Some sin that you like to fix but you can't. Something outside of your power to change and you're helpless before it. You see, the rescuer came because we need to be rescued. We need certainly to be rescued from from the fact that we were cut off from the God of all life. That's what sin does. It cuts us off from God and it cuts us off from relationship with each other so that we have brokenness and hurt and pain in our lives, in the life of the world that surrounds us. We have, we have sickness and pain and death. And we can't fix any of that.
We need to be rescued. And the rescuer has come with power, overwhelming power. These words that Jesus spoke, zeal for your house will consume me, right? Or these, these words that were prophesied, were prophesied of Jesus, right? Zeal from your, for your house will consume me. We, we, we tend to look at that and say, yeah, well, Jesus is really going to battle for the Father. Do you think the Father needed that? Do you think he really had to go to battle for the Father? You think that's why he was doing this? You think that's why it was recorded? So we can say, oh man, he, he, he really went hog wild for the Father. No. The temple was the place where God met with his people. In the Old Testament, when they built the tabernacle, the, the glory of God, the Shekinah of God filled the tabernacle. It, he dwelled with his people there. When they built the temple in, in, in the Old Testament, later on, the, the Shekinah filled it. The, he dwelled with his people there. Here is where the people came to find their rescuing God, the one that rescued them from the land of slavery, the, land who, the, the one who brought them to the wilderness wanderings, the one who, get, who brought them to the promised land. They found their rescuing God here. But all that had been shellacked over with greed and taking advantage of those who needed to be rescued. Jesus wasn't fighting for the Father here, he was fighting for you and for me and, and for people like that, that widow with the children who needed a God to rescue her, but only found people who would take advantage of her in the house of God. Jesus showed himself to be the one who would violently push aside all obstacles so that he might rescue you. What did, what did she say in there? Put that up. He made a place for me to be still where rest and trust meet right there at God's feet. She could meet with God again in this most holy of places. The word uh, Shabbat, it, it means rest. They, it was here in the presence of their rescuing God, that one could find that rest and know that this almighty rescuing God was theirs and would be with them always. The scribes and Pharisees, they they asked this question. They said, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. He's talking about his body, right? There's, there's this shift here. This, I think, was, was written for us, especially. After Jesus died and rose again, the, 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 the folks who ran the temple, they, they, they'd go back to, to the same way it was, wouldn't they? they, they they'd have the, the money changes in there. They would, they, 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 they would rip off innocent people. They, they, it wouldn't be a place where they could find this rescuing God again. There'd be stuff between it and them. But, but things by then would have changed. It was no longer a holy place where you went to find God. It was in the person of the holy Messiah, the temple of God where he comes to us to dwell in our hearts. This rescuing God 
powerfully went the way of the cross and the empty tomb for you so that you might know in every place where you need to be rescued, he's there. Not, not in a prescribed place that you have to go to, but, but in the very person of Christ who comes to you and makes his home within you. And yes, says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them, not in a place, but in a people, in the building of the people, the church of God. This was written for us so that we could know the same thing Jesus was doing that day for all of those who were in that temple. He did for all of us in the temple of his body, overpowering all enemies in the cross and the empty tomb so that wherever you need to be rescued, you can know that he is there and he is one for you. Come and rest in Jesus. <laughs> whatever burden you carry, whatever trouble is too big for you, whatever shadow is across your heart, whatever guilt you can't fix, come and rest in Jesus. Find his forgiveness and his peace in the resurrected one. For in him, you have been rescued. <laughs> And in your life, if God brings someone into your life where that you see so clearly their need to be rescued as well, bring the Savior to them as well. Amen. Now may the peace of God which pass all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life never ending. Amen.